Good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to today's yoga class, which, um, if anyone has seen the title, is uh, a little bit more focused on upper body strength. That doesn't mean uh, we're going to be doing push-ups for an hour, <laughs> I promise. Um, it's a well-rounded flow, but um, I'm sure you'll notice as we move through it, um, there is a focus on us building strength in the upper body. And often when we're building strength in the upper body, it also targets our core because we like to keep everything sort of solid and strong. So if you feel it there as well, you're not doing it wrong, I can promise you. So when you're ready, we're going to start into child's pose. So relatively wide knees, toes to touch, bum to heels, and then walk your hands away from you. Slowly let your forehead come to find the floor. Give a little press into your hands to re-sink those hips back down towards your feet. And start to feel the movement of your breath in your body. Allow your eyes to close, your head to feel heavy down against the floor. And then just feeling the movements within your chest and torso as you breathe in and as you breathe out. Finding softness all over from fingertips to tippy toes. Just feeling a heaviness in the limbs, softness across the face and softness into the belly. Allow your breath to be strong and purposeful. So you're filling the lungs to the top as you breathe in. Notice that short, natural pause at the top before you then exhale and slowly allow all of that air to escape you. Again, as you're breathing in, feel that space within your body. And as you're breathing out, feel the softness. Take a couple more breaths here, allowing yourself to feel settled, just allowing yourself to fully arrive. And then we're going to stay down into our child's pose, but I want you to wiggle your hands together towards each other and let the palms come to face one another. So hands are into prayer. Let your elbows bend as you take your thumbs towards your shoulder blades or maybe just the back of your head, depends on the length of your arms. And instead of letting your forehead rest onto the floor like it does in child's pose, lift your forehead off the floor, pull your chin towards your chest and really feel like you're sending your body weight backwards. Your elbows are pressing down against the mat and feel like you're trying to drag your elbows back towards your knees. So really opening into the upper body to begin with. You should feel this into your triceps, into the side body. Breathe into those tight spots. Breathing out. Keep curling that chin towards your chest. Breathe in. And breathe out. Good. Release your little sh your shark fin down to the mat and then rise your way up into tabletop. Wrists underneath your shoulders and just narrow the knees slightly so they come underneath your hips. Moving through our cat and our cow as you breathe in, dip the ribs towards the mat, lift the chest, look forwards. And as you breathe out, round your spine, tuck your tailbone, hollow out the chest, the belly, push into those arms. Same again, breathing in, press the sit bones tall, lift through the chest and breathing out. Keep moving between these two shapes at your own pace, whatever pace your breath is moving at, it might not be the same as mine, but just allowing yourself to find those full range of movements within the spine and just take a little mental note of what your body is doing in these shapes or what your spine is doing because in a short moment when we move on, we're going to use these, these uh, movements for something else. So a couple more, keep finding that very peak of each shape, a nice domed back at the top, a nice scooped belly at the bottom. Great, take one more, breathing in and breathing out. 
So coming back to a neutral spine, the gaze down just between the hands. We're going to tuck the toes under behind us, press into the toes and the balls of the feet and let the, no the knees just float away from the mat so into a hovering tabletop. Draw your belly up towards your spine, hold your core in firm. Press those feet into the mat and push your hands down firmly. Let your chest rise as far away from the floor as you can. Breathe steadily, keep softness across your face. Inhale. Exhale. One more, breathe in. Breathe out. Great guys, place your knees back down, give those legs a little pause, a little rest. Step your knees a tiny bit further back away from your wrists, tuck your toes, lift your hips into the sky and bring yourself into downward facing dog. If you want to give your legs a little awakening with a pedal, then of course you're welcome to do so. Focusing on finding that length in the back of the legs, keeping engagement in your core, drawing your belly in and up, so you can allow your hips to hinge and keep your sit bones high. Armpits are opening wide. Head is dangling softly between the upper arms and maintaining softness across the face. Let your legs find stillness if you're still having your little wiggle. Each breath in, press into the hands, rise away from the mat. Breathing out, find softness. Good, one more breathing in and breathing out. Now, thinking back to our cat and cow movements, just let your knees rest down for a moment, just to give your shoulders a little rest. Maybe just turn your hands over a couple of times to let your wrists find a little counter stretch and start warming into the forearms as well. Lots of weight bearing when we're working on our upper body strength. So we're going to use those cat and cow shapes in the spine to do some spinal rolls. So I want you to find your plank pose first, shoulders above your wrists, tuck your toes under as you press your heels back and find your plank. A tucked tailbone, broad shoulder blades, belly holding in. Now, as we push up into down dog, I want you to think of your cow pose. So take a bend into your knees, drop your ribs, lift your chest, push your body weight back into down dog, hips are high. On the come back into plank, we think of the rounded spine, we think of cat, hollow out the front of the body as you roll your shoulders forwards on top of your wrists. Good, same again, bend the knees, think of the chest lifting, ribs drop, push your hips to the sky to come back to down dog. And then rounded spine, tucked tailbone, hollow out the front of the body as you come back into plank. And then again, keep practicing, keep moving between these two shapes. There's no particular right or wrong way for it to look. Just think of that cat and cow spine as you move between your down dog and your plank. You'd have nice straight legs on the way forwards towards your plank. You have your bent knees on your roll back towards down dog. Let yourself have a couple more rolls here. Press into those hands, really feeling the heat in the shoulders now. And then let your knees come back to the floor. We're going to keep our, our hips on top of our knees, coming into a variation of puppy pose. But I want you to keep your tailbone tucked under. So think of hollowing out your belly, tailbone tucks between the legs. Let your hands walk away from you, stay up high onto your fingertips. And then think about broadening your shoulder blades as you sink your armpits towards the mat. That tailbone is staying tucked, so you'll notice that your chest doesn't sink anywhere near as close to the floor as it might have done in our other puppy variations. But breathing here, feeling that length in the sides of the torso, feeling that those shoulders, the upper body muscles really working in this one. And breathe in. And breathe out. One more breathing in. And then as you breathe out, let your hips come to sit onto your heels, your hands slide back towards you and your head to dangle freely. Maybe it can rest onto the mat. Just let your arms be super floppy and let them rest here. Focus on that breath, keeping it elongated, controlled, strong. Deep breath in. Slow breath out. 
Now allow yourself to push back up into tabletop. So your wrists are gonna stay wide, well, underneath your shoulders. And then from your tabletop, just take a little step back with your knees. So you're in a little bit of a longer tabletop. We're going to move again between a few different shapes. So keeping that rounded shape in your spine, we're going to come forward, shoulders go past the wrist, tailbone tucks under, and then bending the elbows, go halfway towards the floor, keeping the elbows close to the ribs, and then press your way all the way up and back, hips to heels, into this sort of more narrow kneed child's pose. So again, we're going to inhale, rounded spine, come into our elongated tabletop, keep going forwards, chest stays facing the floor, squeeze the elbows in towards your ribs, and then press your way back up to the top, tuck to tailbone, push your hips back to your heels towards child's pose. Great guys, again, inhale, forwards. Exhale, little lean forwards, halfway lower towards the floor. Inhale, press back up to the top. Exhale, sink your hips to your heels. Let's keep moving. Inhale, rising forwards. Exhale, halfway lower. Keep that tailbone tucked so your core stays working. Inhale, press up. Exhale, sink back. Couple more. Inhale, forwards. Exhale, halfway lower. Press your hands down. Inhale, press to the top. Exhale, hips to heels. Last one. Inhale. Exhale, inhale, and exhale. Good job, guys. Pause when you get back into your little child's pose. Let yourself rest there. Perhaps you'll feel a little bit more of a release if you take your arms alongside your body. Let your shoulders roll forwards down towards the mat beneath you. And then roll yourself up hands onto the mat, tuck the toes under behind you and find yourself back into your down dog. Take a moment to elongate out through the armpits, press those thighs backwards, find that stretch in the back of the legs, pull your belly up towards your spine. So from here with the right leg as you inhale, lifting it to the sky for a three-legged dog. Keep that leg in the sky as straight as you can, reach through the toes, keep that left heel nice and heavy. Take your gaze down to the mat right underneath your head so you're no longer looking at your feet, you're looking down towards the mat. And see if you can walk your left hand towards that left foot. So we're really balancing here. Walk the left hand towards the back of the mat. Pitch it onto your fingertips as you keep reaching that right leg tall. Press your right hand down, keep the chest moving back towards the legs. Breathing in. And then as you breathe out, both hands to the top of the mat, right foot steps between the hands, keep the back knee lifted, push the rear heel away from you, and then take that right arm to the sky as you turn your chest, turn your gaze right up towards your fingertips. Press that back heel backwards to straighten out the leg as best you can, and try to send your twist all the way down towards your belly button. Breathing in. And then breathing out, hand to the mat, footsteps back, hips go high, and back into your down dog. Trying on the other side, inhale, left leg to the sky. Really reach, squeeze the muscles around the bone so that top leg is very, very active. Gaze is down towards the mat beneath you. Let your right hand either creepy crawl, or maybe you can do it in a big one step, towards that back foot, pitch it onto fingertips, and then keep lifting through that leg. Press your left hand down, rise away from the mat, breathe in. And then breathing out, two hands to the top of the mat, left foot steps forwards, keeping that, those hips nice and low down into your lunge. Right hand remains onto the mat, inhale, left arm goes to the sky. Keep your shoulder stacked right on top of your wrist, the other wrist right on top of the other shoulder so you're nicely stacked and keep this front knee squeezing in towards the body. Take a nice deep breath. And as you exhale, hand to come to the mat. This time the back foot steps in to meet the front foot at the top of the mat, feet come together. Inhale, draw the chest out long, thighs press back, shoulders away from the ears. As you exhale, forward fold, hands to the floor, bend the knees as much as you need to as you dangle your head. Same again, inhale, halfway lift. 
exhale to forward fold. Heel away all the way up to stand. Arms go alongside the ears, pull the fingertips to the sky and then exhale, release your arms alongside your body as you come to find standing towards the top end of your mat if that's not where you ended up. Breathing in, send the hands to the sky, the gaze goes with them. Exhale, forward fold, fingertips to the floor, bend those knees, compress belly and thighs together. Inhale, halfway lift, hands to the shins, tabletop shape through the spine. Then we've got two options from here. As we exhale, hands are going to go down to the floor. We can either step our feet back or we can jump them back and then we're landing halfway down towards the floor like we did in the little practice at the front. So we can step our feet back. We can lower the knees, go halfway down towards the floor and then press our way back up to the top as we then push back into down dog. If you've done little jump backs before and you know your jump back to your chaturanga, then that's what you can move through instead. That was the first option I just demonstrated. We'll move through it again in a second and I'll show you the second option. So holding your down dog, broaden your shoulder blades, heaviness through the heels. Breathing in, breathing out. As you inhale, look forward towards the top of the mat. Bend your knees, take a little spring of your feet to hop your feet to the top of the mat, landing as lightly as you can. Inhale, halfway rise, keep the shoulders away from the ears. As you exhale, forward fold, hands to the mat, head dangles in front of the shins. Inhale, all the way up to stand, squeeze the thighs together, hold the belly in, nice straight line. As you exhale, forward fold, all the way down to the mat, head hangs freely. Inhale to the halfway lift. So as you exhale, the hands go down. You can either step back, just like I showed, and you can pop the knees down, or we can try a little jump back and we can lower all the way to the floor. So jump your feet back, slowly lower the body all the way down to the mat. From there, keep the knees down, see if you can press your way up to the top of your push-up, and then send your hips into the sky for your down dog. All of these different options, one of them will feel most suitable for you, one of, you, one of them will find your edge. So hopefully, you can feel the muscles in the upper body working as you do that. Breathe in as you hold here. Breathing out. Inhale, look forwards just beyond your fingertips. As we jump forwards, try to keep your hips as high as you can so that when you jump and land, you land into a forward fold rather than down into a squat. From the top of the mat, inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale to come to stand, keep your tailbone tucked under, core is engaged. Exhale, folding your way back to the mat, compress the torso to the thighs. Inhale, halfway lift. I'm gonna demonstrate the jump back again, option to step. Hands go down, feet jump back, slowly lowering the elbows, lowering the body through bent elbows all the way to the mat. Untuck your toes, leave your knees down, press into the hands, see if you can come back to your supported plank and then pressing the hips to the sky and into your down dog. Three breaths. Two more. Last one. Great, looking forwards, top of the mat, bend those knees, make your way forwards, landing as softly as you can. Inhale, halfway rise, squeeze your kneecaps up towards your hips. Exhale to forward fold. Inhale, come all the way up to stand, nice and tall, reaching sky high. Exhale, folding over those legs, hands to the mat, soft neck. Inhale, halfway lift. If we're doing the jump back, as the hands go down, allow yourself to lower as you jump. So we're not jumping and then lowering. As the feet find the back of the mat, your elbows are bending. So it's like one fluid motion all the way down. Untuck the toes, leave the knees down, strong core, press your way to the top of your push-up. And then hips to the sky, into your downward facing dog. Let your face soften, let your head hang freely. Breathing to lengthen through the back of those legs. Transferring the weight as best you can towards the lower body. Good. 
press it forwards. Exhale, taking that little jump. Keep your hips high, land as light as a feather. Inhale, chest pulls forwards, thighs press back. And as you exhale, fold forwards and down. Inhale, rise your way up to stand. Reach those arms tall, keep your shoulders away from your ears. And then exhale, let your fingertips come back to the mat. Soften the neck, head dangles. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, hands to the floor, stepping or jumping back, lowering the body in one straight line to the mat. Untuck those toes, knees down, press your way up. This is the last one, guys. Hips into the sky, down dog. Now we're going to pause here, lengthening out those armpits, keeping your shoulder blades nice and broad. With your inhale, rock your body forwards into plank. Now, if you now need to adjust your hands and feet, let's say your plank is a little bit longer, don't adjust them from now on. So keep your shoulders on top of your wrists, press those heels away from you and keep that tailbone tucked as you hold your plank. Breathing in, breathing out. We're then coming onto the right hand into a side plank. I want you to keep your feet staggered. So one foot is on the left, one foot is on the right, and your left arm is going to reach towards the sky. Hips stay high. Now there's a little bit of pivoting in the feet here. We're going to breathe in as we hold our side plank. As you breathe out, turn back towards down dog. Take the arm in the sky and reach towards your right calf or ankle or some part of that leg. Inhale, come back towards your plank. Toes point sideways, left arm to the sky. Exhale, scoop it back under, pivot the feet, reach towards your ankle or calf. Inhale, side plank, arm to the sky. Exhale, pivoting back, reach towards that right leg. And do one more, guys. Inhale to reach. Exhale to scoop under. Hold the ankle or the thigh this to, uh, or the calf this time. Give a little pull against it. Maybe take your gaze under your right armpit into your twisted down dog. Breathe in. And breathe out. One more. Breathe in. And breathe out. Good. Left arm. Let your forearm come to the mat underneath your face. Let your other arm come to match it. Palms together, elbows down as you hold your dolphin here. So elbows are under the shoulders, palms can press together or face the floor. The hips are high just like your down dog but this time on the elbows. If you have a headstand or a pincher practice, you're very welcome to practice that now. That's not something I'm going to be guiding us through this evening. We are holding our dolphin, pushing our elbows down and breathing steadily. Inhale, exhale, one more, breathing in, breathing out, good, letting yourself return to the mat if you're in some sort of upside down shape, knees to come to the mat to untuck the toes, hips to the heels, an option for your child's pose, either arms out uh, extended or your arms can come alongside your body, forehead to the floor, and take a few breaths to allow everything to feel like it's all moving just a little bit slower. Calm it back down. Great, roll yourself up towards your tabletop. Come to find your plank. Get those shoulders above your wrists, tuck the toes, press the heels backwards and hollow out through your belly. From your plank, don't allow any distances to change when we move. This time we're coming into a left side plank, so left hand down, right arm to the sky. Make sure your feet are staggered, so that there's one on left side of the mat, one on the right. Breathe in, hips lifting tall. As you breathe out, let your feet pivot, that arm reaches back towards your left ankle or foot or something on that left side. Inhale, arm to the sky, side plank, take your gaze with those fingertips. Exhale, scoop under, hips high, reach. Inhale, side plank, keep those hips lifting, hold your core in firm. Exhale, scoop that arm under, find some part of the leg to tap. Last one, inhale. And then exhale, pause when you get there this time. Hold on to some part of the leg. Let those heels feel heavy, the gaze goes under the left armpit. Give a little pull against whatever part of the leg that you're holding on to. Feel that stretch across your 
upper right side of the back. Last breath in. And then breathing out, place that right forearm down onto the mat, elbow goes down. Left arm comes to match it, elbows under the shoulders, palms to press together or towards the floor. Gaze goes back towards the toes, breathe in, press those elbows down. Breathing out, option to stay here or just to fire it up a little further, inhale right leg to the sky, three-legged dolphin. Keep pressing into those elbows. Exhale, place it down. Left leg, inhale, reach it to the sky. Stay calm across the face, keep breathing. Good, place that foot back down. Anyone upside down can bring themselves back to the mat. Knees go down, hips to the heels, arms to go wherever feels most comfortable. Forehead to rest down if you wish. And just allow yourself to breathe. And allow that softness and that slowness to return back into the body. Great, roll your way up until you're coming up onto your shins. So you're kneeling towards the back of the mat, giving our upper body just a little stretch out at this point because it's worked so hard for us already. So inhale, take your arms up above your head and then bend your elbows and come to hold on to your own, your own opposite elbows. Think of drawing your left arm next to your head. So with your right arm, give it a pull. Feel that length along the whole left side of the body and just give it a little draw off to one side. Arms come back overhead, keep thinking of the arms going behind the ears and then pull in the opposite direction. The right arm comes nice and closer against the ear and the side of the head. And there's that big old length in the right side of the body. Draw yourself back upright, release your arms, interlace them behind you into a fist. Breathing in, draw the fist towards your feet, puff your chest towards the sky as you squeeze your shoulder blades together. Holding here, breathing in. And then breathing out to release and to shake it off if you need. So bringing your hands back to the top of the mat, we're going to come into a down dog, tucked toes, hips high. And there probably is very few poses better for strengthening your shoulders than a nice long down dog hold. So we've got lots of them in this class. From your down dog, we're going to roll forwards into plank. Shoulders come above those wrists, so have a little check in with where you are. Press down in all fingertips and all edges of your hand. Keep those heels pressing back into your plank. And we're going to do some movements in the leg. They're called little lalatana uh, step ins. So, with your right leg, you're going to step forwards onto the top of the foot, so we're not using our toes. Cross towards the left side of the mat, back foot steps in, so the ankles are crossed, we're on the tops of the feet, and then step them back and into plank. Your core will really feel this one. Left leg, step it in, top of the foot, diagonal shin, the other leg steps in, crosses behind it. Step it back into plank. We're gonna do one more each side. Right foot steps in, top of the foot. Left leg comes in two. Step it back. Last one, left leg. Press into the hands, right leg steps in, keep pushing. And then stepping it back and into plank. Drop those knees down, sit yourself back onto your shins. And whoo, did you feel that one? So before we get too tired in our upper body, we're gonna have a go at our crow pose. We've switched on our core, we've switched on our upper body muscles, our body is ready to give it our best shot. If you're at home, and uh, I'm sure we're all at home, if you're at home and crow is your bit of a nemesis and that fear factor is really holding you back, grab yourself a cushion and place that cushion onto the mat in front of you. Not to aim towards, not because you're going to fall, just to try and reduce your fear of falling because it's really not so bad when your face comes to take a little landing onto a cushion. Top tip. So working on our crow, coming into a little squat onto the balls of the feet. The hands go as wide as they would for a plank and we think of gripping the floor. So your fingertips are holding onto the mat. The eye of the elbow turns to face forwards towards the top of the mat. And as you do that, think of broadening your shoulder blades. So cat back, uh, rounded upper back. 
The chunky part of the knee on the inside of the kneecap is going to come to rest onto the back of the triceps. If you're very new to this, keep it nice and low down towards you. If you're more advanced, you can start taking the knees higher up towards the armpits. So starting low so that we get used to the uh, where the balance is that little bit more accessible. Press the knee into that part of the tricep and lift your hips high. Now keeping those knees squeezing in, imagine your thighs are pulling towards each other, your belly is holding in firm, look forwards out beyond your fingertips. Let your chest and body weight shift forwards, press down into those hands and maybe see if those feet start to feel light enough to lift away from the floor. You can step one foot at a time, always leaving one foot onto the mat if you wish. That's a nice way to stay feeling safe, feeling secure whilst working on the strength. If you have that cushion there, that often gives you that little bit of extra encouragement to keep your body weight going forwards. Grip the mat, your fingertips act as your brakes when you're balancing on your hands. Your heel of your hand is your accelerator to send your body weight that way. Your fingertips are your brakes to stop yourself going too far. So it's that fingertip control that's really gonna help you not go too far forwards and down onto your head. So really utilizing that grip of the hand is something that perhaps you could practice if you're in that category of too scared to go forwards and if you do, you're taking a tumble. If you've managed to find a little bit of balance in your crow, or you're still giving it a go, see if you can come straight down into your yogi squat. So place your feet wide, about as wide as your mat. Toes turn outwards sinking your hips as low towards your heels as you can and your knees are pushing wide away from the body. Hands then come together. As you lower your hands towards your belly, your elbows press into your inner thighs to widen your knees. Trying to take the weight towards the outer edges of your feet. So imagine your inner arches lifting up and away as you press down towards your little toes. Hips are heavy and the chest stays tall right on top of your pelvis. Breathe in, keep lifting, find lightness in the upper body. Breathing out, keep encouraging those thighs wider. Maybe your elbows can start moving a little bit lower if you need a little bit of an extra challenge. Breathing in. And breathing out. Great. Bring your hands onto the mat in front of you. Push your hips towards the sky and turn your toes ever so slightly inwards so they're in line with the edges of your mat now. You can keep a soft bend in the knees if you need to, if your hamstrings are, are feeling a little bit on the tight side, but forward folding, holding the outsides of the ankles, the calves, any part of the leg that is accessible to you and giving yourself a little pull. Thinking of your hips staying high into the sky. The weight is a little bit forwards towards the toes, not as much weight into your heels. And with that lightness, keep lifting the pelvis, use the strength in the upper body to draw the torso that little bit closer towards your legs, or I guess the gap between your legs. Breathing in. And breathing out. Again, breathing in. And breathing out. Now from here, keeping a bend in your knees if you need to. Remember, when we stretch our hamstrings, it's not about straight legs. I want you to cross your arms, right arm on top of left. With those crossed arms, hold on to your own shins or your own ankles. So things are going to start getting a bit twisty and complicated here. Right arm on top of left, hold on to your arms. And now separate your elbows away from each other. Start to take your gaze underneath your right armpit. There's only one way the body can twist here when you've twisted those arms. Keep lifting your hips to the sky. Keep looking under that right armpit and your left hamstring should really feel this one. Keep gently pulling against the ankles to keep the fold within the body. Breathing in. Breathing out. Take one more, keep twisting. And breathing out. Great, undo your twist. Walking your hands back towards centre. Hands are going to walk to the top of the mat. Keep your feet relatively wide and then your left foot to follow you to come to the top of the mat just outside your hand. And if you need to, you can step your right foot that little bit further back for your lizard. Drop the back knee to the floor. Make sure that your torso and your hands are on the inside of this front foot. And then chest is going to stay pulling forwards. Untuck your back toes for comfort. Allow your hips to drop towards the floor. So you might be staying here, this is a good place to stay, or if you have a little bit more space to give and hopefully 
um, if you've done a few classes, you're getting there. Your right elbow might be able to come to the floor. And if you are, we're gonna leave the left hand on its hand, so don't drop that one down today. Your chest is gonna stay pulling forwards. The hand can either stay on its side or can turn to face the floor, whichever you prefer. The front knee stays drawing in towards the shoulder, so don't allow that leg to flop away from you. And keep allowing your hips to drop down towards the mat. So when one arm is on the elbow, and one arm is on the palm, we call it funky arms. So we'll currently be in funky arms. Now, if your elbow didn't drop down, don't worry, just stay on your hands for now. From your funky arms, let your back knee tuck, uh, back toes tuck under and lift your back knee and see if you can pick your front foot up and step it back. So you're now into like a funky plank. So it's like a forearm plank, but your left hand is down. So if you are on your hands, you can step back to plank and then lower your right elbow. The elbow and the hand are in the same line and we keep the chest and the pelvis facing the floor. So the right arm is doing the majority of the work here. Press that elbow down and either stay here or see if you can lift your left arm and reach your fingertips back towards your toes. Breathe in, keep pushing. And then breathe out, place that hand down. Wow, that was hard. Gaze back towards your toes, see if you can walk your feet in just a little bit. Lift your hips to the sky so you're into this funky down dog. Deep breath in. And deep breath out. Great. Walk those feet back to where they came from, all the way down. And then let your hips come to the floor. Your left arm can match your right arm as you find yourself into Sphinx. Let the elbows press down and gently draw back towards the hips. As you lift your chest, look forwards. Squeeze through your glutes as you press your pelvis down and find some recruitment and some strength into your lower back as you lift your body. Reaching out through the toes, breathing in and breathing out. And then from here, coming into our half frog. So your left arm is gonna stay down, give that right shoulder a little rest. Bend your right knee, the right hand goes to find the foot and gives it a little pull in towards your bum. It doesn't matter how far you're pulling it in, but pull to the point that you find a little bit of a stretch. Maybe that comes quite easily. And then think of the front side of the pelvis and push it down against the mat. So there's no gap at all in the front, um, underneath that right hip. And that pushing down by squeezing those right glutes should really ramp up your stretch. So obviously you can uh, move into that as much um, as you're comfortable with. But it's not about yanking your foot as close to your bum as you can. Find that recruitment in that right glute, press the pelvis down, and that will really make the stretch um, suitable, should I say. Breathe in, keep that chest facing forwards, keep lifting. Breathing out. And then one last time, inhale. And exhale. Now, this foot that you've got hold of behind you, leave the foot pointing the sky, but let go of it and come back towards your Sphinx pose. The left arm is gonna reach out alongside your shoulder. Palm faces down, let yourself come down onto your chest and then roll onto your side. That bent leg is gonna find the floor behind you as you come for a nice stretch along the front of your left chest and shoulder. Give that left palm a little press down so that that shoulder and chest stay working as they're stretching. And that top right knee stays lifting towards the sky as it rests against the floor behind you. If that foot won't find the floor and it's very uncomfortable, just leave it on top of your left leg. It doesn't have to go behind you if that's not there for you today. Breathe into that top left section of your lungs, expand into it. And breathe out. One more. And then roll yourself back onto your belly. Let your hands come back underneath your chest and then roll your way all the way back and into your down dog. Re-lengthening re out the spine, re-opening out those armpits. Let your head hang nice and free. Good. 
So coming back towards our Lalasana step-ins. Roll your body forwards into plank. Right leg, step the knee in, top of the foot onto the mat. Left foot steps in behind it, so the ankles cross. Step in and back, plank. Left foot, step it in. Right foot follows, step it back. Keep your shoulders right on top of your hands. Right leg in, left leg follows, stepping it back. And last time, left leg in, right leg in, stepping it back. Good job, guys. Drop yourself down onto your knees. Come back, tuck those toes under. Second opportunity to work onto your crow pose. Those that are still working on finding your balance, keep going for it. Those that are a little bit more advanced and have found balance here and there, happy with it, take your knees that little bit higher up towards your armpits and see if you can start to get your arms a little bit straighter. So broaden through those shoulder blades, squeeze the knees into the arms, the weight comes forwards towards the fingertips and keep pressing down to lengthen out through the arms. The higher up the knees are towards the armpits, the more we're having to use our core to support the weight of our legs and less we're able to sort of rely on a counterbalance. So giving that another couple of goes, or one go, or, or not, if, that's, if you've had enough. And then again, see if you can land yourself into your wide feet for your malasana, your yogi squat. Hands together, use those elbows, drive the knees wide, keep your chest nice and tall. Press down into the outer edges of your feet. Lift your chest nice and long. Inhale, exhale, last breath in and breathing out. Take your hands, the mat in front of you, lift your hips to the sky, let your toes turn in slightly so you come back into this semi wide legged forward fold. Keeping a soft bend in the knees if you need to, arms can dangle freely or you can hold those ankles again and give yourself a little pull. Find softness across the back of the shoulders, the back of the neck, and lift those hips up by keeping your weight that little bit more forwards. From here, coming back into our twist, so left arm this time goes on top of the right, crisscross. Hold on to your own ankles, or maybe even going towards the back of the, the ankles towards your Achilles. Separate the elbows, there's only one way they can separate, otherwise they get stuck. Look through that gap that you start creating, so you're looking under your left armpit, moving in that direction, pull against your own legs. And this time it's that right hamstring that's really feeling it. Breathe in. Breathing out. Last one. Exhale. Good, untwist, bring yourself back round towards centre. Walk your hands forward to the top of the mat. Your right foot comes with you, wider than your shoulder, and you can just step that left foot back a little further too. Drop your back knee to the floor, both hands on the inside of the front foot, and really sink your torso to the inner part of the thigh. Keep the knee nice and close to the body. Try not to let the knee flop away from you. And think of your chest dropping parallel down towards the mat. Your right hand is gonna stay as it is for this one. If you have the flexibility, the space to do so, drop your left elbow down so that the elbow and the hand are on the same line as the foot. Chest stays lengthening forwards. Squeeze the knee inwards. Drop the hips forwards and down. Breathing in, breathing out, last one, good, now if you're in your funky arms, you're going to lift your back knee and step the foot back into plank, if you're on your hands, step back into plank and then lower your left arm, so press down into the elbow, press down into the hand, see if you can lift that foot up and step it to the back of the mat. Broaden through the shoulder blades, press away through the heels. Maybe want to choose to stay here, and I don't blame you if you do, or see if you can reach that right arm out alongside your right leg. Pressing down, pushing those heels away. And then place that hand back down alongside the elbow. Look towards your feet, walking them in. Press down through the elbow to keep the crown of the head as far away from the floor as you can. Nice and tall through the pelvis and then walk them all the way back out. 
Let your body come down to the floor and your right arm to match your left back into your sphinx. Draw the elbows lightly down and back towards the hips to lift your chest. Breathe into the front of the body, expand your belly. Breathing out. Last one. Great, your right arm is gonna stay supporting you. Bending the left knee for your half frog, left hand finds the foot and give it that little pull in towards your bum. Little or big, I guess it depends on what range you're working with. Give the front of that left side, the pelvis, a press down into the mat, so that's big and strong. Squeeze your left glutes and really squish your pelvis down against the mat. With each inhale, keep your chest lifted. And with each exhale, keep finding that activation. Press down, reach out through your right toes. And then from here, keeping that foot in the sky, but letting go of it. You're going to come down onto your chest. Your right arm reaches out, palm faces the floor alongside your shoulder. So make sure you're sort of forming a right angle. It's not going all the way down there. Roll yourself onto that right side and that bent leg comes to find the floor behind you. Keep the knee up towards the sky and your left hand can just be here to support the twist, to hold the body in this shape. As you give that right arm, that right hand, a press down against the mat. As always, try breathing into the sections that feel that stretch, that tightness at the front of the right shoulder. And then soften as you exhale. And then rolling back onto your belly. Let your knees widen to be about as wide as your mat. Push yourself up, big toes to come to touch as you sink yourself back into your child's pose. Allow the body to feel nice and heavy. Allow the hips to keep sinking to the heels and the arms to stay creeping away from you, finding that length in the shoulders, in the side body. And then walk your hands in until you've got the space or you're upright to spin your legs around to find yourself down onto your bums. Make sure you've got some space onto the mat behind you. Knees to be bent, feet hip distance apart. Arms reach alongside your legs as a bit of a counterbalance. A tucked tailbone, chin to the chest. Slowly roll yourself down. Don't let go at any point. See if you can control the whole descent until you find yourself completely down against the mat. Keeping those knees bent, bend your, or bring your feet that little bit closer towards your bum. Your feet are still hip distance apart and they're still pointing forwards. Let your shoulder blades shuffle towards each other ever so slightly underneath your chest. Press down into your feet and lift your pelvis away from the floor into bridge. Squeeze through your glutes to find that lift and keep pushing down into the big toe side of your foot to stop your knees falling wide and your feet turning outwards. As you keep lifting, see if you can wiggle the shoulder blades a little further together, interlace your hands underneath you and press down into the backs of the shoulders and into the fist to help find more lift into your torso. The hips are lifting up, but the chest is also pushing towards the chin. So it's an up and back motion. Expand into the front of the body as you breathe in. Softening across the face as you breathe out. Keep holding, guys. Breathe in. Breathing out. And then last one. As you breathe out, slowly let your hips return their way to the floor. <laughs> knees popping and cracking, if you could hear those. Let the head and the knees hug back in towards the body to give yourself a small squeeze and maybe a soft little rock from left to right. Just feeling the lower back press down against the floor. From there, widening your knees, wider than your torso, knees towards armpits. 
Feet to then flex towards the sky as we come to happy baby, reaching up to find your heels or your toes or your ankles, some part of your leg, and then drawing down on the feet, aiming those knees out wider than the body. Keep those toes moving out towards the top of the mat. The whole length of the back stays down against the floor. So focus on your lower back, the underside of your pelvis and give it a, a press down to sort of resist that backwards roll sort of shape. Couple more here. and then releasing your feet down onto the floor. Hug those knees nice and close in towards your body. Now, we're going to take the knees over towards the right hand side into a twist. But from there, I want you to take your bottom leg, your right leg, and think of sending the toes towards behind you. That left hand, I want you to see if you can find that foot. So sometimes you have to bring your chest up simply to know where the foot is. But if and when you can find it, keep kicking that foot behind you as you let your body sink down towards a twist. If this is too much, just let your knees stay together on that right side. The left shoulder is staying as heavy as it can in the left direction. And the right hand can just rest onto the thigh or onto the belly. And just allow your face to soften as you breathe into those tight spots with the torso where everything's feeling a little bit trickier. And then releasing that foot if you took that bind, roll your knees via the center and then both legs to go over the left. It's your bottom left leg that you'd start to scoop out behind you. Just give your hips a little wiggle to help it out there. Right hand, find that foot and kick it off towards the right side of your mat. The left knee can fall down towards the floor if that feels too intense. Maybe just make a fist with your left hand and let your knee rest onto the fist instead. If you have a yoga block that would be even better. Find heaviness in the limbs on the right side in the right shoulder. Heaviness with the leg on the other side. A deep breath right down into the belly. Slowly breathing it back out. And then roll yourself back onto your back. Untangle your legs and then one leg at a time. Allow them to release out onto the floor. Your arms alongside your body. Maybe just shuffle your shoulder blades a little closer together so you can maintain that open feeling across your chest. Closing the eyes, relaxing the face. Watch yourself take a deep breath in and then watch that breath go all the way out. Feel a heaviness in the arms and the legs and the head. Feel a lightness across your chest, across the face. Feel the body winding, slowing down. Allow your breath to be the same. And then find yourself a reawakening with a deep breath in. Finding movements in the limbs, 
maybe taking a big stretch up above the head. And then drawing your knees in towards your chest to give yourself a little squeeze, a little hug. And then gently rolling yourself up to a seated shape at the top of the mat. Chest nice and tall, arms nice and soft. With your final inhale, circle your arms to the sky, lifting the chin. And your final exhale for the hands to lower down towards the belly as the chin lowers down towards the chest. Namaste, everybody. Thank you, as always, so much for joining me uh, this evening for this class. I hope you uh, could feel that in all the right places. And perhaps if that is a type of practice that's unfamiliar to you or new to you, you might feel it a little bit tomorrow as well. But um, hopefully it challenged you in a fun and in a good way. Um, I'd love to hear from you in the comments how you, if you enjoyed the class or what you thought. Um, it is a donation-based class. A very big thank you to those that have supported me with these classes. Um, if you're able to, there's a link to my PayPal in the um, description just below the video. I hope you have a lovely rest of your